Since They Are Billions was released onto Steam's Early Access program in December 2017, there's been a number of interesting game-changing improvements made to it. With a 0.9 patch at the beginning of the summer, the developers at Numantian Games, in addition to Giants, gave us six new colossal buildings to consider. Like the Titan compared to the Ranger, these buildings are both gigantic and impressively powerful. They're also impressively expensive. Building the cheapest of the six costs 12,000 gold. Let me say that again, 12,000 gold. Plus hundreds of wood, stone, iron, and or oil. And it feels like I'm just piling on here, but you've also kind of constructed at least a wood workshop, maybe a stone workshop or a foundry, depending on the wonder. So let's get right to it and start discussing the first of the six wonders, which I'm going to order by cost, which gives us the Crystal Palace, Silent Beholder, Academy of Immortals, Victorious, Lightning Spire, and Atlas Transmutator. After describing the six, I'll go over some general strategy tricks on using them in your game. If you're enjoying They Are Billions and would like to see more videos, please hit that like button and subscribe. I like playing simulations and city building games, and you'll see more of them from me in the future. First up, the Crystal Palace, which provides 800 food. You might think, looking at the research price of this wonder, that it's comparable in cost to building farms or hunter cottages. However, like all of the wonders, you have to pay twice. Once to research the structure, and then a second time to place it. That makes the palace more than twice as expensive as any other source of food. Luckily, this wonder requires neither energy nor workers, just raw materials. It provides 800 food, which is enough for 800 citizens. Of course, which means 400 workers. The palace itself has the largest footprint in the game, at 6x6 tiles. Finding a place for it means you've got to have a lot of open land somewhere that hasn't yet been polluted by mills. Is it worth building? Like all wonders, there's two considerations. One, if you can afford it, and two, if the alternative, that is securing land for farms, hunters, and fishermen, isn't appealing. All six wonders are fairly close in cost. The cheapest is 12,000 gold plus hundreds of materials, while the most expensive is 16,000 gold plus mats. That's a fairly tight range, so as I start talking about the second cheapest wonder, that statement is, of course, relative and not very significant. This wonder is the Silent Beholder, which, like the palace, requires no energy nor workers to run. In fact, this one has the smallest footprint of them all, zero. When you build it, it appears atop your command center. The Beholder exposes the entire map, like what happens when the final wave hits, but you'll get to see the entire map before then, whenever you choose to build the wonder. For players that really like to know where the choke points are, or infected are coming from, and what the map looks like, this is a great wonder. It costs more than a dozen radar towers though, although with infinite range, so you're not stuck having to explore half the map before you can explore the other half. I love knowing the map layout, so to me this is my favorite wonder. Before I discuss this next wonder, I want to discuss the inn briefly. The inn has four advantages. When you build it, it provides 100 workers for 100 food, which is twice the usual rate. Second, nearby homes up to 24 tiles away get a 10% boost in gold production. Third, any unit you recruit at the inn will be immediately available. And the fourth advantage is that basic units you recruit will always be veterans. Those are some hefty advantages, and generally, if you've got the money to spend on a wonder, chances are the inn is also a good buy, since that 10% gold boost will pay for itself fairly quickly. In fact, it's something that you kind of want to start the game with, trying to bear in mind where you're going to place your inn. The difference in price between our next two wonders, the third and the fourth, are that one requires oil instead of wood, so it's a small difference. The Academy of Immortals requires wood, and that makes it a bit cheaper and quicker to have the mats for. It costs 7,000 gold and needs stone and iron too. The Academy turns all of your units into veterans and makes it so every new unit you train is immediately a veteran. This nullifies the inn's final advantage. If you've built an inn, the Academy loses a little bit of its value, and if you've built an Academy, you've got almost no reason to recruit units at the inn. Since all veterans are more than twice as effective as non-veteran units, having veterans is a big upgrade and the Academy affects every single basic troop you have, whether that's a dozen or a hundred. While none of the veteran basic troops are as cost-effective against swarms as the advanced units, they do have their uses. 
Generally, if you built up a large army before you unlock advanced units, the Academy will make good use out of all of them. The fourth wonder is the Victorious, which increases the gold production of nearby dwellings. Nearby means a whopping 24 tiles. That's in each direction, so it's a full 52 by 52 tile area that gets the plus 20% bonus. Additionally, this wonder has 8,000 hit points, which is 8 times as much as a stone wall and 4 times as much as a stone tower, plus 10 points of armor, which reduces the damage taken from most types of attack. Of course, like all the wonders, it also provides extra victory points at the end of the map, which is just bragging rights, of course. If you're looking to hit a new top score, wonders are definitely a key. The gold bonus of the Victorious means it's most useful to place in the middle of all your housing, although the hit points and armor suggest placing it someplace to block incoming hordes. A much easier decision is where to place the next wonder, the Lightning Spire. This wonder provides tons of energy, which also provides energy coverage over a large area. Generally mid-late game, which is when I've got the cash to spend on things like wonders, I'll have cleared a bit of land but not yet expanded into it. The Spire provides one way of granting tons of energy coverage without having to build individual Tesla Towers and waiting for them to finish. It can also power defenses without having to leave a Tesla Tower up in the front lines, vulnerable to energy attack. Like the two previous wonders and the next one, this wonder requires workers to keep it running. But unlike them, it doesn't need energy. It, of course, provides its own. The most expensive of the wonders is the Atlas Transmutator. In addition to 16,000 gold to research and build it, you've also got to dump 400 oil plus similar amounts of iron and stone into it. The net result is 40 oil per tick, generated from wood, stone, and iron. It's transmuting those materials into oil, see? The World Generation Code likes to put oil patches in the far corners of the map, sometimes making a lot of oil production difficult to achieve, or requires leaving your oil platforms out in the open to be demolished by the first zombies to get there. The transmutator helps reduce that problem by providing a significant oil supply, provided that you've got an empty place to put it. It's only 4x4, half the size of the massive Crystal Palace, so long as you haven't yet covered every available tile with mills, you should be able to find a place for it. Just because the atlas covers 16 tiles doesn't mean that's all you need available. Many of the buildings can't be built right next to each other, and wonders are in that set. Okay, with general coverage out of the way, I want to cover some strategy tips. As hinted at in the title, one of the decisions is whether you're building a wonder for fun or for profit. Generally, you do them for fun. They're all exceedingly expensive. Let me go over the three general reasons to build them. First, to get the achievement. To remind you, there's an achievement for building all six wonders in one game, which was added in the 0.9 build along with these wonders themselves. The easiest way to complete this achievement is to choose the easiest map at the easiest settings for 150 days. You'll have plenty of time to build up a large city, defend it well, and get the wonders built. With low amounts of enemies, you won't have to devote as much time and energy into defenses, and you should be able to get the research done fairly easily. Second, there's a few cases where you really need the wonder. The transmutator gets you oil if you've got the cash and really need more oil, and price-wise it's competitive with building several more executors and a bunch more troops to watch new choke points. Remember, it's 40 oil, and that's the equivalent of foil ore platforms, which is nearly 5,000 gold right there. Likewise, the palace is a great source of food on maps where finding farms, trees, and water is difficult, or if you've already farmed everything you can reach. As you start building huge cities, the lightning spire provides the energy you need without taking huge amounts of room. The Beholder can be a great help if you're that sort of player, and by the way, I am that sort of player. I like being able to see the whole map, especially before we get to the final wave. The Victorious can provide enough of an income boost to pay for itself, and the Academy can take a large army and make it far more deadly. The third reason to build wonders is for fun, which can mean points. In addition to boosting your score, it's very likely that whatever wonder you build will have some advantage to your game, even if the whole price isn't justified. But they're neat buildings, and if you're chasing a higher score, they're essential. I know I've talked a lot about cost effectiveness here, and that's because in a challenging game like they are buildings, you've got to be mindful of both where you're putting your money and where you're putting your attention. I've got some other videos that cover the mechanics of the game, which I hope will help you become a better player. I'm off for now. I'll see you in the frozen wastes. 
you're still here, please like and subscribe, and thanks for your support. If you've got questions, or if there's something about the game you'd like to know more, please leave a comment.